Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for part two of my Young Living video. Let's get on with the Young Living tea. <laughs> I apologize for our background noise once again. Lots of kids trying to keep them quiet. Doesn't exist, but whatever. All right, so let's start with how I got out of Young Living. So after doing a lot of research, um, doing deep dives, finding out of all the, what did I find out? I found out through LinkedIn, thankfully, somebody in the comments had left um, news article uh, links and I was able to find the news articles for the first time in 2016 about what Gary Young and, uh, did to his newborn daughter, who unfortunately did not survive her whirlpool, her whirlpool birthing experience. We all we all know the story. He was practicing medicine without a license in Spokane, Washington. Is it Spokane or Spokane? Please tell me in the comments. And um, his wife at the time, Donna, uh, delivered their baby at his insistence in a whirlpool bath. He left the baby underwater um, for an hour under the mistaken belief that the immersion and slow introduction to air would ease the baby's transition from the womb to the world, and she died of cardiac arrest, according to the coroner's report in that news article. It's very sad. Um, it's very upsetting. And then a year later, he was, um, he was pled guilty and um, agreed to probation um, for practicing medicine without a license because he was arrested. And you can go to the Spokane, Washington courthouse where that occurred and you can find the docket information for that arrest record. Um, so let's move on. So I got a Young Living. So first of all, I found out all that information. <laughs> Not happy. After the incident with um, the cinnamon bark and the thieves oil, I looked up, I sent an email to everybody I had known who was involved with the Young Living. like, I can't recommend you buy this product. It's possible that this is just an error because in fairness to Young Living, cinnamon is always, is a very highly adulterated oil because of the difficulty to obtain the product. Um, like I said, it's only available in one part of the world. It's very hard to grow. It's an oil distilled from the bark or from the roots or, or the leaves or whatever. There's cinnamon leaf oil, there's cinnamon bark oil. Cinnamon bark is more expensive. Cinnamon leaf is more easily accessible. Um, and there's different types of cinnamon. But in any case, um, it, it's common that cinnamon is going to be adulterated. You have to make sure the people you buy it from um, offer some kind of GCMS reports that verify the current batch you are purchasing and um, is free from adulteration. In any case, um, so in fairness to them, I wrote that email and I'm like, to be honest though, at this point in time, I cannot recommend the products. And I was honest and I still am. I'm going to be honest. I cannot recommend you buy any more products and, or essential oil products because this company clearly has, um, issues with its own seed to seal thing. And Young Living tried to spin it. Like it was first, it was Dr. Pappas out to get you or that he was wrong, whatever. And actually, after that whole incident with Dr. Pappas, um, the Diamond Level, the one who I had arguments with up to this point, uh, contacted me. She called me on cell phone. I think she asked me in a group or something to call her, or she she offered to call, and I said, yeah, call me. And so she called me uh, on my cell phone. It's the only phone I have. <laughs> but she called me, and we talked a little bit. And she tried to feed me these lies about Dr. Pappas' history that I actually already knew to be false because I had already listened to the deposition. And if you don't know, a deposition is two things. It is prior, it is work product, so it's actually confidential information unless it becomes a part of a published, uh, unless the case itself goes to trial, in which case it becomes public information. Um, I don't think if that's all cases, I think it's some, or depends. Don't quote me, not a lawyer. Um, so that's one thing. So they had it scrubbed from the internet because it is confidential information. But at this point, I had already watched both parts. So, oh well, damage done. Second is she tried to feed me this information about him that was patently false. 
I'm like, this is what you're saying is not true. I didn't confront her. I just, uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, oh, uh huh. And I asked some questions. I don't remember what I asked her. I just remember she was trying to salvage Young Living's dignity uh, by saying that these tests were false or, or whatever. So don't buy it. So that was fun. Um, but in any case, back to Young Living and why I left. Well, I finally left Young Living when the DOJ report came out. I woke up that morning to seeing the Department of Justice, Essential Oils Company pleads guilty to trafficking in violation of Lacey Act. I'm like, what? <laughs> I woke up that September morning to that. Like, okay. So that was great. I read the, just the DOJ's uh, blog post about this and what had happened. And then damage control. So White Young Living and all the diamonds and golds and everybody was like, damage control, damage control, damage control. So what they did is, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Jared Turner is the current president of Young Living. He was named president shortly before Gary Young died in 2018. He tried to create this spin doctor um, approach to it. And the reason he did this is because he's a licensed attorney. That's right. So his job, like a good lawyer, is to do his best to represent the company by taking the facts of the situation and saying the truth of them in a way that is in favor of your client. This is just how lawyers work. You have to be honest. It's literally a requirement to even sit for the bar exam is honesty. That's why they do a moral character application, at least in California. So you have to be honest. I'm pretty sure it's the same with Utah. And you have to tell the truth and you can't leave anything out and leaving things out makes you look bad. That doesn't mean you can't spin it in a positive way. That doesn't mean you can't say the truth in a positive way. So that's what he did. He went on this campaign about how, um, you can look this up, how amazing Young Living is because it has these protocols designed to prevent this kind of issue in the first place. It has these lacy compliance um, protocols. And if you read the DOJ report, the problem with his statement is the obvious issue is that this is literally, according to the DOJ report, a condition of their probation. He conveniently left that out, but I guess he didn't have to say it because it's public, it's public knowledge, public information. So all he has to do is say, oh, oh yeah, yeah, that, that's a condition, but look how amazing it is that we're following the law or following the rule. Now, my thought is, well, this would have been great if you had obeyed the law in the first place. Just thought that the baby agrees. Uh, to their credit, let's just give a credit where credit is due. To their credit, according to the DOJ report, they were cooperative the whole time. They're the ones who turned themselves in and they pled out. So th that's all. To be honest, that's all good. They took, they took responsibility for the actions and they're dealing with the consequences and they paid their fine. Think about pleading. I'm going to do a side note here. Based on what I know, what I've learned in evidence and what I've learned in criminal law and criminal procedure, remember, I'm a student of the law. I am not a lawyer, so don't come to me for advice. But I am a student. And from what I've learned is that people plead guilty a lot for crimes they didn't commit. That's really sad and disturbing, and that needs to change. But it happens based on what I've learned. And if you do statistics, I think this is this is public knowledge. You can look up the statistics for how often this happens, and it's a problem. But you can plead guilty for something you didn't actually do because lawyers are very imposing, prosecutors are very imposing, and if they think you're guilty, they will pursue the case. Hold on, somebody is flagging me down. So, yeah, you can ha you can plead guilty for something you didn't do. In Young Living's case, they admitted to doing it. They turned themselves in. So, 
good on them for doing the right thing um, and catching this issue and fixing it, or at least trying to fix it. And now they're trying to make it better. That doesn't make it any less twitchy <laughs> that they had to um, come out with this, this, uh, it's damage control. I, I can't fault a lawyer for doing a lawyer's job. So, because I'm trying to be a lawyer. <laughs> I can't fault him for doing his job and doing it well. I just can't. Um, but yay. Good job on, on making that selling point. All the distributors bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> anyway, so after that, I, I waited until... I, oh my God, hold on a second. I got to get something. Okay, I had to run out and grab something because I had to show you. So I waited until my one year anniversary with Young Living or whatever came about because I wanted to cash out my points with Essential Rewards. Now, I originally, I told you I signed up in like March in 2015 and then I signed up for Essential Rewards, but then I canceled Essential Rewards in the summer of 2015 because bills came up that I had to take care of. So after I canceled my Essential Rewards, after a couple months, I re-signed back up. And when I re-signed back up, my anniversary date became sometime in um, October, September, either September or October 2016. So I had to wait till my anniversary month and the month after came up so I could get this. They had rolled out these essential oil bottle called Loyalty if you had stayed on the essential oil rewards program for one year and a month. Hold on one second. Okay. And so this oil, you get it at your one year. I got this at my one year, so September, October. And then I cashed out the last of my rewards points. And once all my rewards points were cashed out and this oil was in my hands, I canceled the account. So 2016, I can't remember if it was November or December, but I canceled my account. This oil, first of all, the first ingredient is caprylic triglyceride. It's a component or a derivative of coconut oil. That means the majority of this product is fatty um, lipid in order to um, carry the whole list of a ton of essential oils. I'm being flagged down. Hold on, dears. Husband just got home telling me exciting news. Apparently, um, his camp uh, from his Fallout game was featured in a big YouTuber's video. So I'm going to have to go uh, address this to this YouTuber. Anyway, um... Yeah, this has a whole host of a lot of essential oils, like way more essential oils than you should ever, ever, ever have in a blend. Um, I can't even count. And some of them are expensive. Sandalwood is not cheap. Let's see. What else is in here that's not cheap? Ylang Ling for Young Living is not cheap. Angelica is not cheap. Frankincense, sacred frankincense, not cheap. Um... Just a lot in here. Melissa, definitely not cheap. Rose, definitely not cheap. And then a whole bunch of others. So let's let's do the smell test. It smells like it has a lot of oils in it. And it, it's pre-diluted, so I'm not worried about hurting myself. Very weird. Yeah, and you get a lot of the different smells. Top notes and bottom notes. Anyway... So I cashed out my points and I was done in 2015, or at least I thought, because in 2018, I got notification that I thought my account was expiring, but I had forgotten that in the middle of 2018, I forgot 2018, like in the summer, I had, I thought I had, um, not I thought, I forgot I had ordered something for a family member. So what happens is to keep your account active, just active, not commissioned, not distributor, just active. So you get the discount. You have to have a minimum 50 PV order in a 12 month period. So sometime from the time you sign up to the same time next year, your anniversary month, you have to order a total of 50 PV worth of product. That could be one frankincense oil. That could be two 
like two lemons, each lemon is 10, and then um, a peppermint, which is 20, and and then another $10 oil or whatever. In uh, the whole 12 month time, it has to add up to a total of 50 PV. So it's gonna be more than $50. Um, and so I had put in an order, but I put in the order, it was like $40 or something. It wasn't even the full 50 PV. And I had told the people who contacted me because they were um, threatening to terminate my account. I'm like, um, my account's already expired by now. Why are you emailing me this? And they're like, well, your account's not expired because you have this order. And I'm like, how does that even qualify? It's not even, it doesn't even come out to enough. But anyway, they ended up terminating my account because uh, something went on on my, I have a Facebook page called There's an Oil for That. I have a viral video on it, actually, because I show you how to dilute the shampoo conditioner. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and they terminated it because I had associated, first of all, they contacted me because I was trying to get people into my downline for plant therapy. And I had to like, I was like, what are you talking about? Plant therapy is a regular non MLM company. There is no downline. I promote plant therapy on my, there's no oil for that page because they promote safe use, safe practices. And because they're a traditional small business, like there's no downline. I literally make zero profit for sharing their stuff. I'm not, they don't, I don't, they don't sponsor me. I made nothing off of sharing products I genuinely liked on that page. So I shut them down on that. Then they tried saying, well, you're associating food with the, um, with uh, an essential oil. So it was a picture of me with holding up a shake. I was at a bad point at this point. And so I had a shake that I had made, just a regular old protein smoothie with fruit and protein powder that I had in my house, nothing Young Living, and a rosary in my other hand. And I had put it up like this and two essential oils. And one of the essential oils, I think one was a young, I think one or both was a Young Living oil that I had put drops on the rosary. And in the description on this Facebook post, I clearly indicated that there was no essential oil being ingested. I just put that I'm using these oils from this brand. I don't recommend this brand, but, and they're on the rosary. Clear description, okay? And there's no association. And the person tries saying, well, because you have it in the picture, the FDA is gonna make the association. I'm like, what are you talking about? The FDA knows how to read. I actually said this. I said, I think the F agents at the FDA know how to read and will know that I clearly delineate what's in the shake versus what's on the rosary and that the rosary has nothing in it that's being ingested. Sorry. In any case, they really wanted me to take that post down. I refused. They terminated my account. I still, I've tried to get in thinking, well, maybe it's just a forgotten password. No, they terminated my account. And I'm fine with that. They saved me the trouble of waiting. So that's how I got officially out of Young Living. I don't care. Let's talk about um, some of their issues. So we all know about Gary Young's history. So let's actually talk about some things I we did in uh, groups. So in the last video, I talked about um, group business building groups where they had issues uh, accusing other companies of FTC violations. Well, in uh, one of the groups, um, before I got taken out of this group, um, a post I had put up about um, therapeutic grade being a trademarked label. Um, and I had taken, and I had put a link to the patent office, to uh, the US patent office, because there is, if you look it up, you can clearly see that therapeutic grade is a trademarked term. And they did this around the same time doTERRA came into being because they really wanted to put the corner on the market for the word therapeutic grade. And now it's everywhere, everybody uses it. It was because their trademark was only good for a year. Of course, Young Living still has it written all over their oils, but it's a trademarked phrase. It's a coin, a phrase coined by the company for whatever reason. But this diamond level person, the one who deleted me for the FTC thing, um, sent me a private message saying I removed that uh, thread. She said, you made a lot of good points and 
were accurate. I just didn't want the people getting confused. I actually have the email. Um, uh, not an email, the uh, Facebook. So I'm looking at my computer because it's a messenger. She says, I deleted the conversation about therapeutic grave. Um, it didn't seem beneficial to the reader. That's why I appreciate what you're doing and you're very correct. Um, and I, I posted an article to clear up confusion. Basically, because I was telling the truth about therapeutic grade, it would confuse the average consumer who doesn't realize that it's a trademarked term. So there's that. Um, I already talked about the FDA labels, so I'm not going to go there, um, and unsafe practices in business. So I'm not going to rehash what I already did in the previous video. I, I really want to get to, oh my goodness, I want to get to the... Um, I want to get to the issues that are public, but not necessarily common knowledge. Let's do a logical test. Young Living has farms. One of the things that attracted me to the company was the fact that they do have farms. Just like Robert Pappas, I thought that was a really good idea to be a company that can produce the majority of your own products. Well, if you look at the farms and you think they have 4 million members worldwide, and they're constantly going out of stock. And it's because they don't have enough sourcing in their farms to get the amount of product they would need to satisfy the consumer need that they have. So what did I write? I said they need enough product. They, they don't track the retail. So they need to be able to have enough product for the only people who are going to be ordering every single month. The distributors. Who else is going to be ordering a product? Retail customers aren't a, a big thing with Young Living. And as a matter of fact, I had, in one of my business building groups, I had asked a question. How do I create, um, how do I create retail customers? And they said, we don't focus on retail customers. The real profit to be made is by having and selling the membership i.e. a downline. So Young Living isn't concerned about retail sales. They're not concerned about tracking retail sales. <clears throat> so how do they know they're going to have enough products? They have to make sure they have enough for the distributors. And you can't get enough product um, for, for the distributors based on... Um, based on just the farms. And actually, this came up in a court case, the court case with Young Living against doTERRA. This issue came up. One of the original founders of doTERRA, who used to work in corporate for Young Living as a director, said the, the farms only consist about 1% of the entire Young Living uh, source of product. So if you do the math, that means they're getting their products elsewhere. So, oops. Look up that information. Just Google doTERRA Young Living Farms, and you should be able to find a court case farms. You should be able to find it. There's actually videos on it on YouTube. Um, some people involved with doTERRA, doTERRA did a video on this. I don't like doTERRA. It's another multi-level marketing. It's a little carbon copy of Young Living, but <laughs> they were gloating a little bit, so that kind of made me happy. Let's talk a little bit now about Young Living's influencer culture. There's this lady who used to work at Young Living Corporate as the educator um, and as the, I don't know, source of, basically the source of educating individuals on essential oils and products and stuff. And she slowly transitioned from working at corporate to brand ambassador. And she has a, a very influencer marketing approach. Her name is Lindsay Elmore. Uh, look her up. Some of the posts she has are really cringeworthy, but she does this influencer type marketing, especially on Instagram. And she does a lot of educational videos. Um, she used to do them all the time on Facebook, regular Facebook lives. And now she, a couple of years ago, she started her own um, like educational website and educational group. So you have to now pay a membership in order to get access to all that information on her blog and stuff. Um, 
but she's supposed to be a licensed or at least was a licensed pharmacologist, um, pharmacy tech pharmacologist, because she has a PhD in pharmacology, but she's very big into woo, crystals, frequencies, energy, you name it, you, you, you name whatever the dream cast, uh, dream, uh, podcast named, she does it. Um, <clears throat> So very heavy into that. And when the influencer rules for the FTC went up recently, um, a person I follow called Jen Loves Reviews actually went over very clearly what the rules have. So if you don't know who Jen Loves Reviews is, go watch her video. She did um, FTC influencer rule, a video on it. Very great explanation. But since those have come up, she Lindsay has now had to put things like paid sponsorship with Young Living. Because before... She wouldn't advertise or make it clear that she was this paid sponsorship with Young Living. When in fact, I knew from what I know how what I knew about how the the law works with sponsorships and ambassadors and how brand ambassadors work, I knew that she was getting paid for this. She just didn't act like it. Now she has to tag it. So that makes me so happy that this influencer law has gone into place and is forcing people to be transparent about the people who are paying for their advertising. Another person of interest is uh, the person who runs a group called CARE. So let me look up CARE for you and I will tell you what this is. It is a um, diamond level led educational site that um, uh, teaching program, let's see. Oh. I'm just going to type in Young Living uh, Care. It, it's for raindrop therapy. If you don't know what raindrop therapy is, it is a therapy created by Gary Young to detoxify the body. It's a type of um, it's a type of training. It's called, so Care stands for the Center for Aromatherapy Research and Education. The person who created this is a diamond level distributor, or was. I don't know if he still is. With Young Living. I am going to, let's see, I'm looking up the founder. I'm trying to look up the founder. I should have grabbed this first. But they certify you in a raindrop technique, which is really actually not a very good technique. Um, every person, every legitimate therapist who has an essential oil expert who looks into it, like NAHA, the National Association for Holistic Aromatherapy, they do not approve of raindrop technique at all. They consider it unsafe. The way it's used is unsafe. Um, the oils that they use and the way they use them, unsafe. So they do not approve of this. Um, so they don't approve of this and there's a lot of and the way they go about this website the way they go about looking at it you're not gonna know uh, who is the background for this dr. Stewart yeah the, the guy who created um, oops we have a we have some crying hold on a second again sorry about that babies bumping bumping heads with each other <laughs> okay so the person who created CARE um, and this raindrop educational program is Dr. David Stewart. I mentioned him in my last video as being the one who coined uh, the whole, um, you can't be allergic to essential oils because there's no proteins. Yeah, that's him. Um, and he's got all his distributor th information here in his resource catalog. Um, they claim that this group, you know, they only recommend Young Living Oils. Gee, I wonder why. And if you want to get uh, certified, you have to only use Young Living oils. Gee, I wonder why. And if I go to Young Living's website, I can actually, you can actually go. The thing about Young Living is they make it very easy to find um, who their uplines are. So you can actually look up the distributors. Um, Dr. David Stewart, there we go. But you can actually very easily look up the um, distributors and their uh, ranks. 
So anyway, you can go online and do that. I'm actually going to move on right now. Okay, so we have David Stewart. Now, the people who kept um, talking about uh, Stewart were like, oh, no, care is totally and completely and 100% not associated with Young Living. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally believe that. <sighs> so let's move on to Melissa Pepping. This lady just moved up to Royal Crown Diamond in the last two years. She does a lot of lifestyle promotion on her um, Instagram. A lot of lifestyle promotion. She actually is a book author. She does a lot of writing for uh, based on essential oils. Oh my gosh. I have all three of her small books. They have mostly they're just recipes. They're fun, cute little recipes. And what she did is she actually started her own makeup line when she was still at the Crown Diamond level. So she started a makeup line called Sweet Savvy Minerals. You could probably look them up. But Young Living bought that um, makeup line a couple years ago and they changed the name to Savvy Minerals by Young Living and she is now obviously the brand ambassador for that because she created it. And um, I'll be honest with you, it's not good makeup. The quality of the products, I mean, if you go online and you look up people's just average distributors before and afters on their essential oils um, before and after using the mineral foundation, there's almost no coverage. I can tell if I want to buy a makeup product or not by looking at how people, when they put it on their skin, whether or not it actually does anything. There's... It's such a sheer foundation coverage, and the shade range is an absolute joke. So, how it works is they have cool undertones, warm undertones, and then they have four dark shades. Because apparently people with dark skin have no undertones. Um, and their darkest shade... Yeah, it, it's bad. The quality is very poor because the um, formulation is just not good. One thing about makeup and why I don't like a lot of natural makeup is that formulation is so important. A lot of work and effort goes into determining whether or not a makeup product is going to do what it needs to do or do what it says it's going to do. There's a, lo a lot of application and user error goes into it, but a good product should be able to stand on its own, even with um, a person who's less experienced. Like myself, I hate using, I, I'm not good at applying foundation, never have been. I can do eyeshadow, I can do lipstick, I can do blush, but I've always had trouble with foundation. My Dior foundation, however, is basically foolproof. It looks good even when I don't apply it well. You can't say that a lot about a lot of foundations, but if you're going to spend a lot of money on a good foundation, it better do what it needs to do. In Young Living's case, you get five grams, five grams for $44, that's the 44 is the discounted price. You know how much it costs for a full face, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, at least three colors, or their $55 eyeshadow palette. Setting powder, by the way, there's no concealer and the setting powder is mineral. It's all powdered makeup, except for the lipstick and the lip gloss, it's all powdered. So if you want a full face, it's almost $500. I think I did the math once, and it was like 483 with a discount, not retail. It's way too expensive. I once got a full face of Dior makeup for 280, like a full face with foundation and mascara. And they only recently came out with the mascara and there's no payoff. I've watched a lot of people put it on and these are, by the way, the people putting it on are people who are raving about how amazing the products are. And <clears throat> I can tell that there's no payoff on the mascara. As you're putting the mascara on, it's taking itself off. And a lot of people complain about the mascara. <coughs> so, <coughs> not good. I feel like I'm talking too much. <coughs> so, okay. so, a lot of these um, influencers, they, they're using lifestyle marketing, which is actually somewhat iffy on the rules, but whatever. Another thing that they encourage is hyper-consumerism. So, who is the most offensive at this, in my opinion? Other than the raindrop technique, we're going to set that aside. 
um, cause I never got involved in this, but, um, I did, uh, I did, I was interested in the makeup and I was interested in the baby line. So if you don't know, Young Living introduced a baby line and their mineral makeup around the same time. And their baby line is called Seedlings. And, um, problem with Young Living is that their products go out of stock. A lot. So why is that relevant? Well, when they came out with their baby line, people were trying to figure out, well, I don't have babies. What can I do with this diaper cream? Like, why are you buying the diaper cream if you don't have a baby to use it on? First of all, it's expensive. Second of all, you don't need it. But Lindsay, let's go back to Miss Elmore here. She was trying to show people that people who don't have kids, because she doesn't have kids. She's single and unmarried. I mean, I think she has a boyfriend now, but she's unmarried without children. And she's showing people how to use the diaper cream as a base for your foundation. Like as a sunscreen before your foundation. Let's think about this for a second. Diaper cream. Okay. I understand if you your baby outgrows the need for diaper cream and you have diaper cream right there. Like, I don't want to throw this perfectly good product away. What should I do without it? What should I do with it? Uh, you don't want to give it to somebody because it's used, but you don't want to throw it away if it's still good. So I understand trying to figure out a decent way to use it, but your face is not the place. And I commented on her post once about this and I'm like, formulation is so important. You do not put butt cream, which is designed for an infant's booty <laughs> on your face. And some people tried to come at me and were like, but butt skin and face skin are so similar. I'm like, I don't care. They're similar. You don't, put, you don't put butt cream. You don't put diaper cream on your face. And you definitely don't use diaper cream on your face if you've at one point used that diaper cream on a baby's booty. And the other thing is because their products go out of stock, it's so unfair to the parents who do have children, who do for whatever reason, want to invest in what they think is a clean diaper cream, it's not fair to them that people who are without children are buying this diaper cream and then using it all up under makeup when it's not necessary. Young Living has a mineral sunscreen. Their first one was SPF 10, if you can believe that. So maybe okay under your skin, but not that great. They finally came out with SPF 50. Like, ugh. the other thing is, so that's ridiculous. Then, then they also do things like scarcity marketing. Oh, before I go on to scarcity marketing, go back to um, hyper-consumerism. Melissa Pepping did a video once where she was trying to tell people or teach people how you can teach your downline members to order more. The trick to getting them to order more was to getting them to use their products more. The way they, she did this is just like showing you all these different recipes. One which I think was kind of cool was a hair spray that she has on one of her books. A texturizing hairspray. Okay, I can get behind that. Um, I need to use up my oils anyway. But she was basically saying, you need to get the people below you to order more to prop you up. And the way to do that, hey, stop yelling. And the way to do that is to convince them that they need to try all these different recipes so they use up all their oils so in 30 days they'll need to buy more she was literally teaching people and telling people that she needed to to turn the oils into a 30-day consumer product like you need to buy this every 30 days you need to buy this on essential rewards every single month here's how you teach people to do that essential oils as wonderful and as amazing as they are Overuse is going to kill the planet and, and may, not kill the planet, but it's going to kill the botanicals like farming frankincense at the rate people are farming. It is going to have detrimental effects because frankincense trees as they are now are very old. So it takes a long time to grow frankincense in order to get it at a point where you can distill it. Um, how, and frankincense is different. It's a resin. Um, you don't distill the oil from the tree. You actually tap the tree and it drains and the resin that drains from it, you collect it, it dries out, and then you can just distill that and that's how you get the oil. Same with myrrh uh, and myrrh crystallizes very easily. It's a much thicker oil and it crystallizes easily. So they're teaching people how to 
buy, buy, buy more through the multi-level marketing scheme. And oh, that's a different issue. But they're teaching them hyper-consumerism. That's what it is. It's hyper-consumerism. You do not need to buy diaper cream so you can use it as a face cream. If you have to buy a mineral sunscreen, just get a mineral sunscreen and use that as your base or your primer. Don't you and don't buy essential oils you don't need. Essential oils can last quite a bit with proper storage and proper refrigeration. You do not need to buy frankincense oil every month. It's unreasonable and unless you're a big unless you're a company that has to sell the oil, that's one thing. But if you're an end user, you don't need to buy it every month. It'll last a long time if used wisely and judiciously. Now let's move on to scarcity marketing. So what is scarcity marketing? Every, every, every MLM does this. They act like, because it's a closed universe, the multi-level structure is a closed universe, right? They act like when a new product comes in, it's like this brand new, amazing thing that no one has ever seen before. So Young Living did the, did this with um, their um, mineral makeup. Now they advertise that their product is cruelty free, meaning it the end product has not been tested. But they admit that the ingredients they can't certify as cruelty free. Um, they get these new oils in, um, or you can't get that product because the Lacey Act says you can't. But all these things are just a way of getting people to think that this company is being legit. So what is scarcity marketing? It's basically saying, we can't get this product to you because it's going to, uh, well, the way Young Living treats it, it's going to uh, either cause a problem or it's not available. So let's take the Savvy Minerals by Young Living Makeup. They won't do red lipstick. Why? They'll do, they have some shades that are close to red, but they're more like a red brown but they can't do that bright, beautiful red. And Melissa Pepping tried to sell it like it was because to get the red shade, you have to use Carmine. I'm sorry, no. If Jeffree Star can figure out how to get beautiful blood red, bright red eyeshadows and lipstick at vegan cruelty-free products that don't use Carmine, I think Young Living can manage the same. And they act like, no, you can't. Every vegan cruelty-free company I know of has a red lip. Elf Cosmetics, anybody? Elf? Jeffree Star? All these cosmetic companies have red lipstick. It's not hard to create, especially with the right colors. But they tried to sell it like they can't get this. And then they turn around and talk about magnesium violet, which is, I think it has an artificial base or something like that. But Lindsay tried selling it like it was this amazing thing. Like, oh yeah, sure, it has these problems associated with it. It might be artificial, it might not be, but it's still great because Young Living uses it. And then because it's a closed universe, when they get things like, oh my gosh, they have baby products. Now I can stop buying things. It, it's ridiculous because you can get biodegradable wipes. Target brand uh, up and up wipes are biodegradable. And the there's no chemicals in them. And they have aloe vera. I mean, it's ridiculous. So Young Living, when they came out with their baby wipes, you know how much the baby wipes were at the time? $8 for a pack. And they had a three pack for like, oh my gosh, I think the price was even more. This is like $11 for a pack of wipes. It was $11 for a pack of wipes. And then later on they offered an eight, they lowered the price to like $8. And then they were like, we're going to do a three pack later on, but it's still going to be pricey. And now I think they do a six pack, but it's $50 for six packs of wipes. Like this is insane. And one of the leaders, a platinum level, she's not in my line, but she's kind of cross line. She had the audacity to come on live on Facebook and, and tell people to basically be quiet about complaining. She was basically like, without saying the word, she was like, how dare you complain about Young Living's products prices? She came on to talk about how we, who couldn't afford $11 for a single box, for a single packet of 70 count wipes, how we were the problem um, because we couldn't afford it. Mind you, that $11 was not retail, okay? So how dare us? And I was so disgusted with that. I'm like, how dare you? 
how dare you? I don't think I was able to comment. If I did, I probably got deleted. Sorry, somebody's story in orange. I'm not going to pause. But how dare you talk to people who don't have the disposable income to spend $90 a month at the time on a hundred uh, on eight packs of wipes. I'm sorry, that's unreasonable to talk to people. She was talking down to people as if they were beneath her. It was disgusting. This same person went on later on to show off how thanks to Young Living, she and her husband were able to buy this house. Woman, the house that you bought was less than $200,000 in a state where you can buy products or that where you can buy housing for less than $200,000. Sure, it was a nice size house. Great, I'm sure you bought it. Your husband's preacher money and book selling had nothing to do with that. But it made me mad. It made me mad because this person is very like, they're very religious, but very condescending. Oof, I hate that kind of religious person where they're like, how dare you insult my company? Like, uh-uh. Don't even, don't even go there. Made me mad. I'm still mad about it. You can tell. Um, if you can buy a house with your young living money in California, then you can talk. Yeah, I'm going to gatekeep that. Sorry. So now let's move on to lawsuits. My favorite part. And this video is, again, long. I apologize, but there's so much with young living. There's so much. And there's a lot that... Uh, I've had to leave out or forgot, so we'll go over that later. But Young Living has a very litigious history, meaning they like to litigate a lot. So let's see. Did you know that California sued Young Living for a violation of their standard California's standards for lead in the products? That was fun. Let's look that up. Let's see. California, oops, if I could spell right, California sues Young Living. There we go. Oh, we'll get to the, the lawsuits, but uh, la 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 la. This is California sues Young Living for lead violations. Lead violations. Lead in food, because they have protein powders. Let's see. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I think I found it. Yes. Complaint of filed in California alleges these young living products contain lead. Where did my thing go? Oh, there it is. Um, but what does that mean? Um, let's see. California. So this was in violation of California's Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act of 1986. California has much stricter rules in a lot of areas than most other states. Um, but they got sued because a lot of their protein powders and stuff had way more lead. Let's see, what products were sued? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. This thing, there's so many ads. Um, the products at the time that were sued for were um, uh, higher levels of lead than any amounts uh, permitted by California were the Young Living Balance Complete Vanilla Cream Protein. Was it vanilla cream? That is a protein powder. They don't have it anymore. Young Living Power Meal Vanilla Cream. They don't have it anymore. Uh, Young Living Juva Power. I don't know what that is. They don't have it. Uh, I don't know if they have it or not. Young Living Multi Greens. They did have it. I don't know if they still do. Young Living Comfort Tone. I don't know if they have that one anymore. A lot. Oh, sorry. As. Oh. Uh, Young Living Fit Magen, Young Living Juvitone, and Young Living ICP. I don't know if they have a lot of these products. Guys, stop yelling. It's not funny. I don't know if they have a lot of these products anymore, but they got sued by California, the state of California, for lead violations. Moving onward. Um, if you go to dockets.justia.com, you will find a whole host of lawsuits that Young Living has either filed or been sued for. Okay, I'm going to try to move on. Kids keep throwing oranges at each other. Anyway, so if you go to docus.justia.com, you'll see, and you type in Young Living Essential Oils, you get to see all the times that they were either sued by individuals or in class action for RICO violations. Let's look up RICO. Okay. Uh, if I could type, I can't type. Okay, RICO Act. Again, would help if I could type. So the RICO Act. <clears throat> 
the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. It's federal law designed to combat organized crime in the United States. It allows prosecution and civil penalties for racketeering activity performed as part of an ongoing criminal enterprise. <laughs> so let's go to dockets.justia.com. Docket. Dot justia. Oh, there we go. I already I've typed this in so many times that I actually have a search engine ready with all the Young Living files. Let's see. We know about the new lawsuit. Um, let's see the. Julie O'Shaughnessy, and then the um, other one, the newer uh, class action. There's two class action losses. Let's see. <clears throat> Gosh. Oh, here's Young Living suing somebody for uh, a trademark infringement, a violation of the Lanham Act. So, so if you go, you can see how litigious Young Living is. They're either, if they're not getting sued, they're suing somebody for like trademark violations and stuff. Um, and again, the dockets are public information. Whether or not there's a document attached to the docket is a whole nother story. If I think you can go to Pacer and get documents, uh, legal documents, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm not gonna spend money for that. But, um, cause it does cost, but um, yeah. Lots of legal history, lots of getting sued, lots of suing. <clears throat> we all, and we do know about the FDA warning letters. So let's look at those. There's actually more than just the warning letter they sent in 2014. So there's actually a bunch of warning letters to Young Living from the FDA as a result of either improper advertising, mislabeling, things like that. Um, for multiple food items, actually. Let's see, warning letters. Let's see. We can actually search on the FDA's website for warning letters. You go, according to this handle, you go home, inspections, compliance, enforcement, and criminal investigations to compliance actions and activities, and then warning letters, and then they give you a search engine. So young living search. Uh, Oh, I think I'm, I don't think I did this right. <laughs> I, yeah. So you can actually find them. Ugh. Let's see, I wonder if they, anyway, you can actually look this up. I looked up some that were on like sugar and stuff that they used to buy, uh, or they used to sell a whole bunch of weird things that they used to sell. Some things were mislabeled like food items some things were mislabeled drugs it was weird like they had a long history of trying to actually fix out their labeling issues i think by now they should have most of their issues cleared out but who knows another thing now this is important this one bothered me the most because this is the most recent um but if you go to their uh product uh, for, for, for the policies and procedures, sorry. If you go to their policies and procedures, they have updated their policies and procedures and their member agreement. So I'm looking down because I'm looking at this. To forbid members from participating in class action lawsuits. Hmm. I wonder why they would have, have you disallow you to participate in a class action lawsuit And they put this um, update out. And you know when they put this out? They put it out after the Lacey Act issue. So I'm wondering why they did that. I really am. Because I don't think that's... I don't think that's fair. Because not only... Okay. Not only they can, they, can they terminate your account whenever they want. They can... Let's see. Oh, here's the thing about their termination. So let's talk about their termination agreement in a second. But they mandate dispute resolution. Most people do this. They can, not only will they force you to indemnify them, if you don't know what indemnification is, indemnification means that if you hurt the company in any way, 
Um, or if you do something that gets the company sued, they can turn around and sue you for the damages back. <clears throat> and you also are being forced to agree, according to number 14, that you agree that any breach by you of the agreement will immediately and irreparably harm Young Living and cannot be made whole solely by monetary damages. You agree that the remedy at law for any breach of any provision of the agreement will be inadequate. So Young Living is basically saying, they are, you are agreeing that they are entitled to whatever damages they deem worthy. Now, how do you think a billion dollar company versus a teeny bitty distributor, how, how do you think that's fair? I don't think that's fair at all. I'm going to use a word that is, that is very difficult to prove in case law, unconscionable. Because to me, this sounds unconscionable. I don't like it. I'm not signing this, but it's there. Um, and yeah, let's go back to their termination agreement. So their termination agreement states that despite all of those things, their non-solicitation, non-compete and confidentiality provisions are going to apply and are gonna survive the termination of the agreement. Let's set aside the fact that non Compete clauses are, for the most part, unenforceable by most courts, especially in California. But that basically means you can't sign up with a company that's going to compete directly or indirectly. I'm peeling it. Okay, you can go peel it. Watch your step. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's put everything aside. I, I don't like where this company is going or what they're doing because to me a lot of their stuff is not fair they're they're they love to sue people they're not afraid to sue people even if they're wrong and they'll do it they have very manipulative tactics they are their groups really push unsafe practices and they um i don't know i just don't like the company and I can say whatever I want because anti-slap. Um, and I'm going to say whatever I want because anti-slap. Um, it's, it's very important that people understand that people like me who get out of this company aren't blowing smoke up their butts. I've been through it. I sat through all a lot of these groups. I've seen the chats. I've talked to compliance. I've talked to a whole bunch of people. And I... It's important that people who are ex MLMers talk about their stories. And in my case, I apologize, it's an hour long video, but it's important that I talk about young living and my experiences. So that's my story. I'm going to stop here. There's plenty more to say about young living and many other companies, Arbon, American Income Life. Um, but I have another video that I'm going to do that kind of goes into all the other stories about other companies that I've either seen or talked to or talked about or whatever. So I will see you on the next. Please like, share, subscribe, and um, feel free to ask me anything, and I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.